welcome to the Grand Hill Chronicles podcast. I am your host, Don Bishop, and the beautiful Lila. We are dressed the same as we were last episode because... We didn't change clothes. It was 30 time. seconds ago for us. <laughs> hey, before we go any further, I want to tell you that we are running a contest. Yes, I'm wearing the same shirt again. It is again. It is now three weeks later, and I promise I have changed my clothes since recording the last... Anyway... So we are now running a contest uh, through the end of June, but stick with us and I'll tell you more about it at the end of this episode. We'll see you at the other end. So let's talk about some updates. And I think one life update before we go into Grand Hill and business, whatever updates, we talked about career designation previously, I think. Maybe. I don't remember. I've been... So usually I'm pretty present. vague in the podcast or maybe one or two episodes ago, I was specific but usually I've been vague about my day job uh, so I'm in the Marine Corps and I'm an officer so we come with an automatic expiration date called an end of active service date and after a couple of years we may be offered career designation your ES goes away and you you just keep going but yeah I was offered career designation and we deliberated and in the end I said no thank you it's a great opportunity Excuse me. but I'm gonna move on I mentioned in the last episode we settled into a house it takes us a lot of time to work and it's been hard we've had the Airbnb drama we've had other drama like we're done moving at least for several years we're done moving and yeah, I want to do something different so yeah, I said no to career designation. So that means that I kept my end of active service date and my active duty service will expire. That's the life update. Now, do you want to... Uh-oh. I don't have a whole lot. Surprise? Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> so these are just these taffies. Future sponsor or something. <laughs> yeah, Numa, call us up. We'll gladly accept some conversation to talk about your product again. They're really tasty. So they're called Good For You Taffy. And as far as I know, they come in like five flavors, I think. And the reason they're good is because, I wouldn't say I don't eat this instead of a meal, but if, as far as candy goes, it's pretty good. So it comes with four grams of protein per serving, which you don't usually get in candy, not a whole lot anyway. I guess if you get like something with nuts or something that goes up, but they all have it. And even if they don't have nuts, which at least one of them has. And it says 40% less sugar than leading brands. And so I don't know what they're comparing to, but it isn't. I mean, it's still pretty sweet. It's taffy. So it still is, but it's not as sweet as it might be if you went a different route. So I'm really excited to have found them. They're super tasty. And it's a mother-daughter team that started the company. So that's kind of fun for me too. It, I like it. I Great. like that that's the thing. He's going to leave that product placement right there. <laughs> well, but then it'll block you. Okay, progress. I mentioned the logo and I, I showed this sorry little black and white printout last episode and I shared the color version. This time I'm going to share, and I feel dumb because I'm only talking about it and I'm not showing it, but I have another version. I've created a couple of different versions, just different colors, I guess, but also as you can see today, that I replaced the, the circles at the corners of the triangle, I replaced those with other triangles to be able to have those shapes at the corners jutting out less from the center triangle. I think it's a good look. I mean, and regardless of what usefulness it has. It makes the rose good. bigger. It accentuates the rose in the middle. And I just think, I think it's a fun shape too. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tweak it. I want to tweak it again and make the corner triangles a little bit smaller. You might see that today, or maybe you'll see it in the future. I don't know. I'm also working on a logo for Thorn Syndicate Publishing, and then you know we're we're a little conflicted about this here because we have. Um, so with the Thorn Syndicate Publishing, I I'm using pieces. Do you want to talk about it? You know what the pieces mean. The pieces. 
No, I don't remember. So I have I all these parts. I think parts. it's awesome, and I love the look of it. I, I like that we're looking at this one. It's kind of a pill-shaped, but and I like that it was kind of floating out like it was a bubble. Like oh, like oh bubbles. really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I liked what you had going there. So we have the square. Maybe un can you undo? And the square, yeah. There's a square, and the square there. has two semicircles on either end. So it creates a pill shape. It's not that I'm trying to make a pill shape, <laughs> but that's what it does. And then there are two other circles inside the square, uh, kind of placed towards opposite corners, but they're large, so they there's not much space in between them. And then there's yet another circle, a little bit smaller, that I was scooting off to fill a third corner, but Lila think it's fun. Lila thinks it's fun. I, I think jutting it. out of one side. I don't know. Maybe I'll just share this in the notes where you can see on thorn.link slash grandhill you can see a few different versions so the thorn syndicate publishing uh, there's also like i have another version I'll, I'll include there where the smaller circle is huge so the square just touches at the corners just touches the big circle and then the two semicircles are folded in instead of flowing oh. out like a pill. So it's kind of filigree. And it looks Gaelic or Celtic, something like that. So we're, we're playing with those designs, and we think it's interesting and fun. We're also considering, because we definitely want to break into children's books, we have an idea for a podcast and accompanying books to go with it. And we're thinking of taking the pill shape and rotating it, and then taking one of the semicircles and putting it adjacent the other semicircle to form a heart. And you'll see that. <laughs> okay, hopefully you can follow heart that. for the little children. Yes, yeah, so, and I really like the way it looks too. Yeah. Do, you, do you want to talk about the significance of the shapes? Sure. Um, the, the lines, okay, it's our names. It's Lila and Dawn. And, okay, bear with us here. OSB Studio. You can capture a display or you can capture... Oh wow, is that like eternal displays? What was yeah. that? I was, that's when it's it's grabbing oh, the display that it's in. Hall oh. of Mirrors. Actually, Lila thinks that's... It, it is cool. So I'm gonna record this. And so that's if you're fun. watching the video, you can see this. It is fun. It looks like that old video game. You remember you like the little ships would go down? It's one of the early... Did you ever A lot of that? video games were kind of like this. Like it was just nested uh -huh. rectangles yeah and the ship goes down like the chute and I can't remember yeah. what you do anyway it looks like that fun so, with all the colors this is what I was talking about here oh it's this is missing a couple of lines okay so you'll see this I'll draw with a different color so we can see it. we are going to spell our names be ready to turn yourself over and around and whatever <laughs> so here is Lila L a I A So you see it was missing those two red stems for the lowercase a's and then there's I'll do a different color There's Dawn This is our reuse of one line right here D O N like a if you look at it sideways this is the bottom Oh, like um, this? It's a like lowercase kind of N. N. Oh, am I not on camera? Am I, are you, you are, still? Oh, okay. Yeah, you are. Like, like, like that. Numa, like the N so in like Numa. like if you tipped it over. Anyway, so... Except for the other side. These lines spell out Lila and Dawn. I have another message from our sponsor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> another thing I wanted to say is that there's a little saltiness to these, which brings out the sweetness without having to have as much sugar. So I think that's kind of how they balance it and how it still tastes really desserty without being overly sweet, like sickeningly sweet. Um, so yeah. Numa! There you go. So let's talk, finally, about stories. All right. And so what... What's your most recent? What have you most recently been working on? I mean, I know it's oh, been a while because you took a little break. I've been frustrated. I've I've basically written nothing in like a month. I talked to the uh, the well-established author. We need to give him a code name because 
I haven't talked to him to ask if I might mention him. I don't know if he wants to be associated with me. Maybe I would embarrass him because I'm not established and I would show myself to be an embarrassment. I don't know. Call him Mr. Underhill. Mr. In, Underhill. In, okay, uh... so I <laughs> I, I um, emailed Mr. Underhill with Gohamusp, uh, these misfit superheroes, if you will, and he pointed out very undeniably that it's not a great plan for um looks not a good premise. Yeah. I need um, I need to build a brand and I need to build a brand on something that has an audience. Mm -hmm. I need to publish a genre that has readers. And these misfit superheroes don't really have readers. So just mentioning that really quick, uh, on on that note, I've been wondering like what am I gonna do? And I've been thinking, I'll, I guess I don't need the writer's income yet. I was, I was thinking to start publishing some things to start, you know, kind of start the snowball rolling on the hill to get people knowing my name so that when I do need the income from writing, it can start. It's there. Um, but you don't want, I mean, you, you won't get that if it's something nobody's going to be reading because they're going to think it's outside of what they're interested in. Yeah. So we think that the story is more interesting than it appears when you describe it. Uh, but you can't sell a story on that. So, so I was thinking maybe. Well, I mean, and you agree yeah. that if you get your name out and your, your work out more and then people are looking to see, read more of you, then they'll give it a chance maybe later down the road. But it's got to be get your name out the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, they say that no publicity is bad publicity. And there's certain truth in that. Because if people are talking about you, that gets more attention towards you. On the other hand, if it's there, there's if the they talk about you as being uninteresting or just whatever, un, uh, irrelevant, or the interest might be fleeting. Yeah. And then they might be they might venture a little and then drop you. So with Gohamus and Lila said we never get to talk. We don't get to talk as much as we would like to. Um, so I haven't told you, oh, but surprises I've, been, for Lila. I've been thinking, well, she knows some of this. She knows some of what I'm about to say. I've been thinking about Gohamas and converting it into something more serious toned. Um, so within the Gohamas universe, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's, it's the guild of holders of marginally useful superpowers. It's an intentionally dumb and awkward acronym because it's, you know, misfit superheroes and whatnot. Uh, they have largely useless superpowers, like the ability to make grass grow twice as fast, you know? And whoever can do that is going to have a, a good wheat crop, right? Or maybe <laughs> maybe he's a bamboo farmer, but he's not going to sweep in and save the... Swoop, swoop, sweep, swoop, swoop in. He's not going to swoop in and save the day anytime soon. But in the Gohamas universe, I was thinking that, that there was a totally legit ultra superhero three, four, five decades ago. And then there was a super arch villain that had a rivaling level of power. And so they come at it and the ultra superhero dies, but not before bestowing his power upon the earth or something like that and so now Maybe it's bubbling up well. and it's bubbling up um i didn't mean that literally but i guess if i say it's upon the earth and now it's bubbling up from the earth it could be literal okay. it's bubbling up and hitting people um not literally but people are finding themselves to have these powers which are kind of dumb and useless but some of them are interesting and some of them are kind of useful like what i came up with um. the other day Oh, oh, the ability to freeze time? Was to it? freeze time. Except for... But you're frozen too. You Ex can think. Except you can think. You can so think. You can't move or anything. But like, that Not would be really said. useful in some situations. Mm -hmm. Like, you'll, you'll never get stuck there like, yeah, well, you, you, you know, trying to think of a comeback. You just pause <laughs> time. You take as much time as you want. You think of a good comeback. Or, uh, or like I was mentioning about word finding. Oh, this was the last episode. Mm, yeah do that and I like I, I'm, I've i gotten really self-conscious about it so then I stutter now because I'm like oh I can't I'm gonna find the word I'm gonna lose the word and I'm, I'm always afraid and so 
if I could just take a step back, it would help me kind of deal with this trauma. Um, so, but I was going to say that these are real people. So you want to make them real people with real lives and real concerns. Yep. But there's an undercurrent of humor because of the ridiculousness of these powers. Well, yes, you're right. But I'm thinking more, a little bit more specifically, um, leaning farther away from the Ben Stiller version of um, Mystery Men. I've never read Percy Jackson, but our daughter has read it, and she loves the whole series. She loves anything Rick Riordan, and she says it it's really Riordan. funny. Yeah, but I've, I've heard sure. it pronounced Reardon in <clears throat> other cases. In the uh, audiobooks, I think they say Riordan. Mm. It's probably Riordan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so our daughter says they're really funny, but they're not billed as funny, mm -hmm. right? And so that's what I'm thinking with Gohamas. But I'm also thinking of, of a, a re-identification as the fractured, uh, because this, this ultra superhero's powers got fractured among right. thousands of people. So what do you mean by a re-identification? In the storyline, they're going to call... No. no, no, just a, a total shift and rebrand. So forget Gohamas? Yeah. <laughs> so maybe there's one guy saying, we should call ourselves Gohamas, but every, people like, everybody else is like, what? Dude, you're uh -huh. crazy. Uh -huh. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, it, as far as these Percy Jackson books, that's a good point. Because there's a lot of intense, uh, like, there's a lot of suspense and adventure and danger and some of the characters die and everything. So it's a very serious thing that they are mm -hmm. that they embark on, but they have funny interactions sometimes. Yeah. And, and it is kind of ridiculous sometimes, but in a, in a funny way. So I'm, oh, I'm not even looking at the I'm camera, tumbling so. the idea and maybe, um, maybe it'll wind up even being a fantasy, like other world fantasy. I don't think so. It kind of loses it. Especially because some of them have technology-related powers, like Zero Day. Anyway, um, so Gohamas, that's that. And then Grand Hill. I think I'm going to lean into Grand Hill. Yeah, you had mentioned that because that's, that's where your heart is. And but it's, it's a good, daunting. It's, it's a good, solid, um, I think there's a lot of interest in that. What did you, how did you categorize it? Uh, what was the subgenre that you uh, had? High fantasy. Uh, and you were saying you wondered if it, do you remember we were we were Don texted me a little bit about this, and we were trying you were trying to decide is it more this or is it more that? Do you remember that? Mm -mm. Was oh. it was it recently? Uh, I don't know, like last week or oh. so. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, you were you were mentioning the different genre types and wondering if uh, what what it actually fit into. I'm going to find it. You can keep talking. Going. So I'm thinking I want to lean into Grand Hill, but it's not so simple because it's tied to uh, our union of stars. And I think I might change that in title. That's a working title. But um, our union of stars is a sci-fi and Grand Hill is a fantasy. But I just wrote a typo. Fantasty. <laughs> Fantasty. <laughs> Something All right, to think well, about. Send us pictures of your food on Instagram <laughs> or on Twitter. Your um, fantastical food. Show us your tasty food because then you will be selected as the fan tasty listener or watcher. Of the month. Of yeah. the month. <laughs> Recurring thing here, right? The Grand Hill Chronicles podcast fan tasty listener of the month. <laughs> um, but seriously, if you have that, send it. Do that and, and we'll send you a, a coupon to something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is fun. Um, Sorry to throw you off. No, it's fine. So, Grand Hill and Our Union of Stars, I don't want to get into right now why they are so connected, but I want to... Our Union of Stars involves an alien um, humanoid race. Um, very humanoid, like basically human. Um, maybe a few noticeable differences in features, you know, like the, the Klingon eyebrows and the pointy ears, but um, not not going as far as blue blood. Um, I said Klingon, I meant Vulcan. But it still applies yeah, Klingon until, Klingon until, until you get to blue blood. <laughs> blue blood is Vulcan. <laughs> Klingons have purple blood. So anyway, this alien race needs a language. And I'm really daunted by that. 
I intend to create a language. Yeah, yeah. So, so I have two things to say. One is I found the conversation, so we can get back to that because I do want to talk about it. It was something okay. I wanted. In fact, I mentioned I think uh, I was like podcast episode tonight or something because I wanted to talk about this. But um, the language thing, I'm just talk. Uh, I'm just talking. <laughs> I was just gonna say that Tolkien. Um, how long I... was it that he wrote that that it took him to write the, the whole series? It was like I think I can't remember. It was something like. 20 years or m more maybe i don't remember you guys who are experts on this can correct my very approximate <laughs> information but it took him a long time and he had different reasons i mean i'm not saying different from yours but he had various reasons for for that being the case um which he mentions in his like a prologue i think i can't remember of a, a reissue or something that came out um back in the day so he gives a good explanation for the reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm like, it, you know, this famous, very well-respected writer not, didn't struggle necessarily, I don't want to say that, but it took him all of these years to piece all this together. And I just, I'm afraid of you maybe um, falling into the same thing, like... I'm afraid of the, all of, of these all years? all of the detail uh, oh. that you want to engender... Mm. Rent Hill with mm -hmm. it's going to take ridiculous amounts of time well we've been at it for 12 and a half years yeah yeah but not full time you know like it's I guess he didn't do full time either but yeah I'm concerned I'm concerned that if if you go too deep into the weeds then you know well, lose your way there are there's some things that I want to have in common between Grand Hill and our Union of Stars and that includes a language. I'm going to invent a language for our Union of Stars and it will show up in the Grand Hill universe as well. Uh, and I can't publish Grand Hill. Like even if I even if I were like, okay, I'm gonna publish this intro novella for Grand Hill, I can't do that until I have this figured out. I need this language and I need some other cultural things figured out that I want to reuse in Grand Hill. I think the language is... Reuse and change them up. It's a wonderful idea and I have a lot of respect for you wanting to do that, but I, I think it's just going to be a hang-up. It's, it's too... No, it it's won't be a hang-up. It's too massive. I... Well, I... I'm not a linguist, but I sometimes fancy myself one. Uh, insert meme of um, oh, oh the, what's his the... name? It's it's from Spider Man from two thousand two. Tobey Maguire. Yeah, the Tobey Maguire uh -huh. Spider Man, where uh, Willem Dafoe's character. Why can't I remember his name? Oh, the the uh, uh, fa Phantom. The he Phantom. says, you know, I'm this something is... of a scientist myself. I anyway, so you know, I'm something of a uh, linguist myself. So, I learned Spanish as an adult, and while I learned Spanish as an adult, I was noting the similarities and the differences between how the two languages worked. And I learned Spanish for a religious mission. I, I went and taught the gospel of Jesus Christ in Spanish for two years. And after those two years, I continued to think about languages. Because I, as I was learning Spanish, I saw cognates between English and Spanish, and I saw Syntax, not quite cognates, mm. and I saw some things in Spanish that they tell you that you can't translate directly from English, that you can translate directly from English. You just have to take English from the Bible. And mm. so there, there are language structures. It's like the word todavía in Spanish means literally and exactly yet. Colloquially in English these days, we very often say still, but if you revert back to an older English, you could replace still with yet, and it still works. And it in either works. case, it yet works. Mm -hmm. And in either case, in Spanish, you can say todavía. It means yet. And in modern English, it also means still. But if you think about yet, it's todavía. 
And if you're listening to somebody say Spanish, somebody speak Spanish, and you hear the word todavía, and you you can put yourself in in uh, King James Bible English, you translate it as yet, and it makes sense. Whereas if you try to understand it in modern English, mm -hmm. it might not make sense. It doesn't align. Yeah. Anyway, so I notice things like this, and not just with words like that, but also with structures, uh, with syntax. Um, and I think it's fascinating. And, I, and you see how, how languages split, and, and sometimes they converge. Um, you think about the, the letter X in English. For us, it's X. And a, in Spanish, it's X except it didn't always used to be, and in Greek it's not, and in Russian it's not. Uh, I hope I don't offend anybody who knows Russian because that's not actually the letter X. It's something that looks <laughs> like the letter X. Come on. It's derived from the same... It's the letter X. Um, so in, in Russian, it's H, approximately. I don't speak Russian, so... Uh, it's basically a hard H, uh -huh. and if you pull out old books in Spanish, you'll see, and the, the, the entire country south of the United States is spelled with an X that sounds as a hard H, and... Why didn't you mention the name of the country? I, well, because I'm making a point. Of, the, it's the, so obvious. Oh, Mexico. The country like, that cannot Mexico, be named. it's Mexico. <laughs> you know, the, the X there. Um... So languages evolve, and they they meet, and they diverge, and it's intriguing stuff. If you can strip away the layers of how a language is used and get to the foundations of what defines it, and this would be the grammar rules, the, the syntax, basic structures, and throw in a few just really common colloquialisms. Like the form of um, language then you have your framework. Now you just throw words at it. I know. You but throw I mean, words at it. You take, like, Tolkien was a professor, mm -hmm. and, he, you know, he was at that level. This is what he did for a living. And it, he still had to parse so much. And, and he and borrowed he was, from, from English like, and uh -huh. Norse yeah. uh, roots, which I do not intend to do. Well, sure. I mean, don't if you don't want to, but I'm just saying... It's a, it's a might be more complex maybe, endeavor. Maybe. I know it sounds like cut and paste. Here we go. Just fill in these blanks. I think the process, though, you'll, will get more complex as you go. Just yeah. because you're going to have to... It can't be that easy. I see it taking me a few um, really involved sessions where I have to dive in and spend some a little bit of time of deep thought. And then after those few times... It'll be filling it in. And it'll be Maybe decisions, right. but I'll Maybe have the right. foundation of my framework. Yeah. Scaredy pants. Yeah. And I... I Maybe I'm more daunted than I should feel. Because um, you can find instructions on how to invent a language online. Hmm. And I've read these instructions, and I'm, I'm surprised at how they make it sound not so insanely daunting hmm. and i i don't believe it that it's that mm -hmm. I, I don't believe that it's as easy as they make it sound and mm -hmm. i don't think they're anyway so yeah i need to create a language and that's been like, holding me up as i well. would like comments on what you your opinions are on this uh i was gonna say fellow listeners and i was like uh they're not fellow they're <laughs> So I'll, anyway. I'll tell you my thoughts on, on this alien race so far. Mm -hmm. they're, they're humanoid. My main character in Union of Stars is going to fall in love with one of them. And it's not going to be weird and creepy because they are they're they're very so, familiar. so human. Mm -hmm. But I need to come up with an alien culture. I'm picturing them as... I'm picturing their world as having less land mass than ours. I'm picturing um, probably a more mature civilization, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are more advanced in all technologies. I am picturing them more advanced in 
space drive. They have faster space drive engines than humans. Humans do have space flight. Uh, we are spacefaring when we run into them. The working name I have for this alien race is the Onumani. Um, and I'm kind of... I haven't spoken this out loud, but I'm kind of kicking around the idea of making their civilization somewhat ancient Greek-like. Because hmm. um, I'm picturing less landmass, more isler, insular, whatever. More more islands, less continents. Um, and a more unified society. Um, that's why I said a more mature civilization. They're, they've They've figured out peace a little better within their society, I think. I might change that. When I get to writing, I might decide otherwise. Did you uh, mention how you want these things to intersect with Grendel? Have you No, have you no, I mean that? I might have in a previous episode. I yeah. haven't today. Because I think that would be an interesting thing to talk about. So, um, maybe not on this episode, but Yeah. That's an interesting point. Yeah. And I think so, it bears a lot of thought to sort out. I read recently that Tolkien created a language and then simulated cultures diverging and then extracted two different languages from that one. Uh, and I don't remember the names of the languages, languages so maybe that's, languages, is, is, is. Maybe that's uh, Mordor and Elvish. I don't, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I don't Sorry, know, I don't know names, I'm, I'm not an ultra Tolkien fan. <laughs> it's cool. I love Lord of the Rings. But I, I don't nerd out and study up. Sorry. But But those are the two the two uh, I kind of sides. see something I I'm going to do some language mutation. Mutation. So the the, the Onumani language mm. that shows up in Grand Hill, there will be bits of it that will be pure. And there will be other things um, derived from it. Hmm. Like Latin? I don't, kind of like Latin and yeah. things are derived from Latin. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, anyway, I think I'm done talking. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, you guys go out and buy yourselves a bag of Numa. Yeah, Numa, Taffy. don't don't feel. Uh, Numa, go ahead and feel free to uh, send us a sponsorship <laughs> contract, and we'll we'll take a look at that. Uh, we might not increase your numbers very much yet, but just wait. Um, anyway, banana, coconut is my very favorite flavor. The others are respectable too, it's just my personal preference. Alright, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on the Grand Hill Chronicles podcast. So during today's episode, you heard a slip of the tongue, and we are running with it. I am proud to announce a contest. Fantasty. As in fantasy like the Grand Hill Chronicles. Fan as in you and tasty as in food. So we decided to run a contest with an honest to goodness prize. We haven't chosen the prize yet, but we're open to suggestions of some kind of coupon or gift card. And it's pretty simple. Send us pictures of your homemade or homegrown food, not restaurant fare. Like this is you, okay? This is from your kitchen or from your garden, and we'll pick a winner. You can tweet it to us, at the Twitter handle at GrandhillCron. That's G R E N D H I L L C H R O N. Or you can email it to fantasty at thorn.link. That's F A N T A S T Y at T H O R N dot L I N K. At the end of June, we'll choose a winner and announce it in our July podcast episode. Now this contest is open to our wonderful newsletter subscribers, but it's free to subscribe and free to submit to the contest. You can subscribe at thorn.link slash grendhill slash newsletter, and I'll put that link in the show notes as well so you don't miss out. Have fun with this, and there's no limit to how many fantasty submissions you can send in. And be sure not to miss our next episode. It's a conversation with novelist Martin L. Shoemaker about constructed languages, invented languages, and linguistics in general. I had a great time talking to him, so I know you'll enjoy hearing what he had to say. We'll see you next time.
It's fun to pretend that people are watching. I didn't know how long I needed to look at the yeah, camera, I so I, I looked away and then I went back. That's all right. That's I probably look, wasn't looking at it. It's going to look We're going to fade out so it softens. Oh, okay. I'll okay. post that. I'll post this at the end because it's, it's awkward <laughs> and funny. Okay. Um, the Writer Dojo does it too. Uh -huh. Uh, they they take a little snippet and put it at the end of the episode. Um, yeah, it's over.